All right. What's up and welcome back to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. My name is Brandon Baldwin and uh, I love reviewing gaming laptops. We've got the Zephyrus G14 2024 and the HP Omen 14. Both have RTX 4070s. We've got the Ryzen 8940HS in the, the, the Zephyrus G14. RTX 4070 in both, of course, like I said. And then we have the Ultra 9 185H in the Omen 14. Uh, we're going to do a whole bunch of things today. We're gonna to first compare these two laptops versus the other 14 inch laptops on the market from cheapest to most expensive and what options should you consider in this price range and in the size if you're going for something super portable. Uh, and then we're gonna do a bunch of tests. We're gonna weigh them together, display test, build quality test, design comparison, um, software comparison, then a bunch of side-by-side -side benchmarks where we can see the Ryzen chip versus the Intel Ultra 9, as well as how these different laptop chassis perform in the long haul, in the long run. So, uh, you know, which one theoretically should have better performance right off the bat? Well, the G14 has a higher power limit to the GPU, but both of them have pretty similar power limits to the CPU. Um, and that's probably the biggest performance difference between the two of them right off the bat, but there'll be more and there'll be, you know, RAM speed, SSD speeds. I don't expect the G14 to win in every category, but I think because of the higher power limit, in theory, the G14 should put out more frames per second in the titles. That's the current working theory of the video. We're gonna find out today if it is faster, how much faster is it? And then because it's faster, you know, at what point does it, is it worth paying extra for the G14 versus the Omen 14, for example, if the Omen 14 goes on sale and this one's not on sale, you know, and you're making a decision between these two, you know, laptops, which one should you go for? So uh, let's, let's see here. All right. Bing, bong, boom. Okay, so first up, value comparison versus other laptops. Let's get into that. And uh, so here is my 2024 gaming laptop list. This has uh, about 500 different laptop models on here now. And I've got it narrowed down to all of the 14 inch gaming laptops on the market. And you can see there's quite a price range variance. Currently, the most expensive 14-inch laptop is the Zephyrus G14 with the 4090 from 2023 for $2799, currently on sale. It's quite a big sale. I believe that's normally $3299 or $3099. It's over $3,000 normally, so it's on sale for $700 off. And then uh, the cheapest one currently, out of all 14-inch laptops, is this Acer Predator Triton 14. I have not reviewed the Triton 14. It's one of the laptops I'd like to review this year if I can, uh, but this is currently the cheapest with a full HD RTX 4050 with an i7, 13700H, a 400 nits display. So it should be reasonably bright display, should be fairly portable. I don't know what the power limits or the benchmarks on this are. There's not very many reviews of that done. So it'd be interesting to review. Uh, another one that's a new one for 2024, on the cheaper side, we have the MSI Cyborg 14. This has an i7-13620H, an RTX 4060, only 45 watt TDP, I believe. Yes, it is. I mean, it's got a cool look with the blue keyboard. It's got the same chassis as the MSI Stealth 14, but it's transparent plastic. Uh, I believe a metal top lid. I saw this at CES, was hands-on with it. Um, and most importantly, the display quality is better. 100% sRGB and over 300 nits, according to the MSI reps when I was at CES. So that makes it at least a potentially big upgrade from the Cyborg, 14, uh, Cyborg 15 from last year. Uh, the Cyborg 14 might be recommendable if it's on a big enough sale. Of course, the low power GPU is kind of its big weakness here estimated at 7,500 for the time spy GPU score. So it's gotta be on a big sale to really make it worthwhile. Um, single fan design with only two fan exhausts on this guy again. So not exactly very high power. Generally would not recommend the Cyborg 14 unless it's just a massive sale. Um, okay, so we have the, uh, among 
all of the field options. We just went over three of them. Of course, we've got the Zephyrus G14, which is one of the ones we're looking at. This is the 4060 version of the G14. The nice thing about the G14, along with the Blade 14, is the CNC milled aluminum chassis uh, and the OLED display, at least in the G14 and HP Omen Transcend 14. Both of them have the uh, OLED display. Notice how these pictures have this beautiful rainbow RGB keyboard on the HP Omen. And notice how the real life, we don't have that beautiful rainbow RGB. It's a four zone with WASD being at the fourth zone here. One, two, three, and then four with the WASD keys. Um, just does not look nearly as good, I don't think, in real life compared to a multi-zone. That said, the... <laughs> The uh, Zephyrus G14 is a single zone in all of the different versions of it. So really it's not that far behind, I guess you could say. Um, what's up, Lex? What's up, De Dennis? <laughs> Just got the 2024 300 Hertz Razer Blade 18 4090. What are your thoughts? Probably one of the best laptops of 2024. Probably top three, almost guaranteed. What's up, Orsai? So uh, let's continue on, all right? So the Omen Transcend 14 is one of the better, for sure, laptops in the 14-inch category, but because it's USB-C powered only, there is a lower power limit on the GPU with the Omen Transcend. So that's the biggest downside. We've got the MSI Stealth 14, which is uh, MSI's new version of the Stealth. I reviewed the Stealth 2023 version. This one has a slightly redesigned chassis uh, and it looks promising, doesn't look bad. Uh, it could be quite good, not done a detailed review on it yet, but of course got the new Intel Ultra 7 with a 4060, not sure what the price is, but uh, still a very bright display on here. When it's on sale, it's likely the Stealth could be a good purchase, but uh, I don't believe it's out yet. It's currently waiting for links on the Stealth. And uh, last but not least, we have the most premium, most premium in the sense that it's the most expensive for your money, what you're getting for your specs here, Razer Blade 14, Ryzen 9 8945HS with an RTX 4070, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, but this is not an OLED display, but it is a brighter IPS panel. And the, the panel, I think, actually tested higher than 500 nits when we tested it in uh, my review in 2023. So the, the, the Blade 14, definitely up there in terms of competitive performance gaming, um, but the price is not very competitive at $26.99. And I would say that the Blade 14 is probably gonna be your most premium for build quality in terms of perky RGB backlighting. You've got uh, beautiful, display that's brighter than these ones. The OLED displays just aren't as bright, but this one's not gonna be as contrasty. And I think the rigidness of the build on the Blade 14 is a little bit better as well compared to the, uh, even the Zephyrus G14. They're both CNC milled aluminum chassis, but I felt like holding the Blade 14 was just a slight upgrade in rigidity. Felt like the aluminum was just like a thicker, higher quality, heavier metal i don't know maybe it's all in my head i have to hold them side by side to really get a good good comparison between them but i would say that uh most likely the blade 14 slightly better build quality um, and it's probably slightly more rigid hinge as well but um overall performance wise the blade 14 and the zephyrus g14 should be right very similar almost identical specs almost identical performance in theory we'll have to see actually testing them side by side, but it should be very similar. Um, okay, so the ones that we'll be reviewing and comparing today directly, the Zephyrus G14 with the Ryzen 9 8945HS with an RTX 4070, 32 gigs of DDR5, 5600, but I think it's actually running at a higher RAM speed than 5600. I thought it was 6400. Anyway, what we'll, we'll be comparing A to 64 RAM speed tests today. One terabyte SSD, three... Uh, so it's 2.8K, 2.88, but sometimes it round up to 3K, 120 hertz OLED display, and the Omen Transcend has the same display. Um, both are around the 400 nits range, and they both are extremely vibrant and awesome, in my opinion. 
and uh, extremely nice displays. They're just not as bright as mini LED displays or some IPS displays at only a little bit over 400 nits. So uh, overall, I think the Zephyrus G14 um, is, uh, I think it's a little bit thinner. I think it's a little bit lighter, but maybe not. I think the Omen 14 is also very thin and light. Uh, and they both have pretty dang good build quality. You know, we're gonna be doing some side-by-side -side flex testing and hinge movement and all of that here in a moment. But um, in terms of raw specs, the Ryzen chip in theory could be a little bit more power efficient, whereas the Intel chip is likely to have better single core performance. Multi-core performance should be very similar, very, very close. Um, so overall, they're the same price. They have nearly identical performance for CPU, but the GPU performance, I'm expecting the G14 to be just a little bit ahead because of the power limit on the GPU being higher, as I mentioned previously. Okay, so that's a spec comparison versus the competition. I would say from a budget standpoint, if you're after the best bang for the buck, going for a 2023, version model is likely when it's on sale is likely to be your best value as of this moment if you were to buy it like this month or this week but if you're going for most advanced features that's where maybe going for a 2024 model with an oled display has some some advantages um overall i would say that most likely if you want the most performance, obviously go for the 2023 4080 or 4090 version of the Zephyrus G14, as that is gonna provide the most performance by a large margin. So let me show you that. Uh, this guy right here, uh, Time Spy GPU score of 18,500. So that's a pretty significant bump up from the 11 to 12,000 you can expect with the 4070 in here. So, uh, you know, that's so from, say it was 12,000 to 6,000 increase, that's almost a 50% jump in performance if you go to the 4090 version of the G14. So very significant performance jump, but it's also a very significant price jump, $800 more currently than the 4070 version. So in my opinion, it's worth paying extra to go to the 4090 version, especially when the 4090 version's on sale, um, if you're after the most performance and you have the money for it. Okay. So that's my basically, if I were to buy it, I would get the 4090 G14. Uh, if I were to buy any of these 14 inch laptops, that's the one I would go for um, currently. But I don't think there's any shame going for a 4070, especially if your budget's more aligned with a 4070. And getting one with an OLED display also has nice perks because it's such a peaky and contrasty display to use and it's it's very responsive in terms of its write in time when um, when you do play games it feels very good even though it's only 120 hertz so the blade 14 being a 240 hertz if you're after esports gaming maybe the blade 14 is better in that sense as well so maybe the best esports one would be a 240 hertz display whereas the best usability generally speaking maybe i think an oled would probably look better more of more often um but yeah, currently not some, like there's, the best sale right now on the 2023 version is probably this one, the G14 4060 for 1200. Uh, but I would say that the, this is not the best sale. This was on sale for $1,000 so $200 more discounted about a month ago. I don't know if it'll go down to $1,000 again. Probably will at some point, but haven't seen that yet. Overall, this is the one I would probably go for if I'm on a budget. 1200 bucks, 500 nits display with a 4060. It's a very nice laptop for the money. Um, if you're not on a budget, going for the 4080 version is a great option or the 4090 version is the way to go, I think. Okay, so. To so run, which one would you choose between the G14 and the G16 with the 4060? So. Uh, if you're going after 4060 only, I would probably go Zephyrus G16 because of the 240 hertz display, but I also prefer a 16 inch display over a 14 inch because it's easier to see my games, uh, eSports games in particular. But uh, if I was packing the laptop every single day with me, that's when I would go for something more portable focused versus what I traditionally buy 
since I don't travel with my laptop every day anymore, I usually buy a machine that has a full TDP GPU. So that's probably the main disadvantage in terms of going with an ultra portable laptop because your power limits on an ultra portable laptop will usually be reduced compared to the thicker laptops. So it depends on how performance hungry you are, how desperate you are to hit really high frames in whatever games you play um, and what your budget is, you know? So there's a lot of things to consider in all of this. Um, so, Orisai, Gizmo, do you advise me to buy the Blade 18 with the 4K screen or wait until the five, RTX 5000 desktop series? I mean, if it all depends on what you have now. Like, if you have a really crappy laptop now and you really want something right now to get a big upgrade or maybe you don't have anything at all, then buying now is not, I don't think, a terrible choice because we don't know when the RTX 5000 series is coming out. So... But yeah, if I were buying right now, I would probably still buy the 2023 Blade 18 if it's on sale for an extra discount because it's not too big of a difference between a 240 hertz and a 300 hertz, at least if you want to save a little bit of money. I mean, if, you, if, if money is no object, then yeah, get the latest and greatest with the best new display and all that. Um, I'd invite you to like the live stream. Let's go ahead and get into... Uh, the way in display test and move into the rest of our testing for today. Uh, and as we do this, I will try to keep a score, if you will, I don't know, well, of which laptop wins each test. So we can get an idea of uh, which way we can lean from a like testing perspective. Okay, so um, way in is the first thing that we're doing today. Uh, so we're gonna move these items back. Grab our scale. All right. So we're going to unplug the back there. It says 3.62, 3.62 for the Omen 14. I know it's kind of hard to read it. Hopefully that helps a little bit. There we go. 3.62 for the Omen 14. Here is the Zephyrus G14, 3.26. 3.26. So much, much lighter actually for the Zephyrus G14. That's actually pretty, pretty significant weight difference, to be honest. Um, let's go ahead and put that in for our result. 3.26. Verse 3.62. All right, it's time for our display test. So, do, do, do. Grab this guy. All right, we'll do the G14 first for our display test side by side. Um, I didn't use this tool, I believe, in the first G14 review, so I wanna make sure to retest this um, so we can see the results. All right. Let's go Spider 5 Elite. Morissette says, I have an Omen laptop with a 2080 Super. Uh, well, I mean, that laptop will still be able to play a lot of games just fine, but uh, it'd be a pretty substantial upgrade depending on the type of game that you're looking to play. Um, AAA games with frame gen is probably your biggest performance gain area, but in terms of raw raster frames as well, even without frame gen, 
it will also still be a very big performance jump. Just getting this set up real quick. Bingo, and here we go. All right, so display analysis, color gamut and brightness. G14 starting out first. Um, I mean, I would say the 20, the thing about FSR, the FSR does help older hardware like the 2080, but the thing is, if, if you are in a, uh, you're trying to use FSR, some games like Starfield have that for support now, but most games still don't support FSR. So FSR 3 with that, which has the frame generation variant, basically. So if you're going for, uh, you know, you're trying to rely on that, it's going to just be very game dependent. Whereas frame gen, it is supported by a lot more games already. So I think there's a while ago, I checked there was over like 35, but obviously there's, I think been even more since I last checked. Um, I'm not sure how many there are now, but a lot. Whereas I only know of like three or four for FSR three. Um, Ari Media says, today I ordered a 14900KS mainly for trading. Is the iGPU sufficient for that purpose? For trading, like is in stock trading? I mean, for stock trading, yeah, that's gonna be fine. Because you could do that just with your smartphone if you wanted, you know, or a Chromebook. You know, trading is nothing. Uh, as long as you have, I guess, the display support if you want to have lots of windows, I guess. Right? If you want a lot of windows, you might need a laptop with an NVIDIA GPU or something. I don't know. Um, okay. Let's see here. Reading chat, reading chat. I wonder why no one has benchmarked the Strix G16 2024 and RTX 4070. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I haven't done it because Asus hasn't sent me one yet. But, but yeah, Ari Media, I would say the primary thing I've seen stock traders like is having like multiple displays, so like two displays or three displays, so they can have lots of different charts. And having multiple display support is probably the main reason why you'd want a dedicated GPU if you're stock trading. So, and that's, I think, I think the Intel CPU can, the Intel integrated GPU can probably handle two displays maybe, but I don't think more than two uh, on a desktop scenario. I don't know. But yeah, that is that 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 CPU is totally overkill for trading in the sense that like you don't need an i9 14900KS to to do trading at all. Gizmo is the RTX 2080 Super Max Q enough for modern games? It just depends on the game. It's still going to play a lot of games just fine, 100. Like I'd say probably at least half of the games could still play on very good settings, but half of the games now probably not as much probably struggling to play on high or ultra probably gotta go to low settings in a lot more games now um which is fine it's not like the end of the world right if you have to so um whoa this is interesting so we are in this is very interesting The result, I just kind of, I'm like, whoa, this seems a little bit low. I wonder if there's anything I did wrong. I don't know. Let's try. I mean, I don't think so. It's interesting. So check out this, check out the Spider 5 Elite results. Okay. 
Um, so keep in mind, Spider-5 Elite underestimates color gamut by about 7%, we'll say. Uh, and right here, we've got 94% of sRGB. 94% sRGB, only 72% Adobe, and 73% of the P3 color gamut, which I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a 100% P3 color gamut display, which makes me think that we have the display in the wrong mode for displaying color or something, because I, th I thought this OLED display could go to 100% of the P3 color gamut, but it seems like it's set on srgb mode or something i don't know it's interesting let's check out the brightness brightness 300 uh, 432 nits 432,000 to one contrast ratio very interesting so let me check let's check asus's website i want to see if they claim that this laptop ha should have 100% P3 color gamut, or if it should have only 100% sRGB. Yeah, so it says right here, 100% DCI P3 color gamut. So that tells me Yeah, this one does not, it's interesting that this says it on this one and this says it on this one and this one doesn't say that, but I'm pretty sure it's the same OLED display in all of these. So I don't know, I'm curious. I will update the pinned comment if I find out that you actually can't. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one from Best Buy, 4070. Well, yeah, the one from, that doesn't say, because we got the 4070 with, I believe, yeah, I believe it's this one. So, yeah, that's interesting. So, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that uh, some setting on this display is incorrect right now and it's reducing our color gamut on the display. And that's why I was looking, trying to look in here as to like where are the display control settings for the color gamut. And maybe, I don't know, maybe HDR support needs to be turned off or on. So HDR is currently enabled. We can try disabling that. There's also a color profile right here Okay. If we change the color profile, that one really changes it. This is the out of the box color profile right there. Let's try this again and see if our color profile changes now that we've changed that because that seems low, right? That seems low for what it's supposed to be. Uh, let's just do the, well, we can do the brightness test again as well, I guess. Let's try again. Very interesting that it was so different from what I was expecting. Okay. RSI Gizmo is RTX 20 for one games. Okay. Uh, Chasmx says you can do FSR 3 mod on older NVIDIA GPUs and it'll work on frame gen only games, Cyberpunk, etc. It works, but not as good as native frame gen or DLSS. Interesting. I'm just going to leave it at max brightness the whole time. What is this device I put on the screen? This is the Spider 5, uh, Spider 5 Elite is what it's called. Um, it's a data, it's a color checking tool for display calibration and testing. It, uh, it basically has a sensor on the 
back of this that will absorb light into the sensor and then analyze it to tell you what color gamut is being displayed. And so the software displays certain images and colors, and then the, the tool will detect if the entire color is being detected and, or if not, and what, what part or percentage of the color is not there. And then that gives us our overall color range. It looks saturated. I, I, I think that those other color profiles were profiles created by the other color checker tool that I have, the Display Color Checker Plus. And so that might have been the reason why it wasn't displaying as much color gamut. I don't know. It could also be a calibration issue or something. I don't know. Let's see now. Okay, yeah, look, look now. Much better. I'm really glad we did that test uh, again, because look at that, 100% of sRGB coverage, 97% of Adobe, and 94% of the P3 color gamut, just by, just, just by changing in the display settings to be the correct color profile, because I think we were on the, uh, an incorrect one from my previous color calibration testing. Um, okay, and the display brightness actually went down a little bit. That's interesting. 419. From 432 to 419 when we calibrated the display correctly. Um, so assuming, you know, like given the 7% of SR, uh, of color gamut loss with the Spider 5 Elite, we are over 100% sRGB and over 100% Adobe RGB. So it's time to test the Omen 14 now and see how it stacks up versus the G14. and plug this guy in over here. So the goal, of course, I be believe our goal here is to see if the Omen can have bigger brightness, less brightness when compared to the, uh, the Zephyrus G14. I don't, I'm anticipating similar, similar levels of brightness. I think the panel might even be the exact same panel. Maybe not. We'll see. Maybe it's actually a better panel. I don't know. We'll see. The, uh, the Omen 14 display uh, was, I noticed, I noticed earlier, it looked a little bit better than the Zephyrus G14. I think that was because of the display color profile we were using though in Windows. So I'm glad to see that uh, we got that figured out. Cause I was like, this is weird that the Omen 14 looks much better than the G14. And it really shouldn't really shouldn't do that right shouldn't shouldn't be better I, I they like I said they're both 2.8k OLED 120 Hertz displays and I I don't know if they're the exact same panel or not but they're very close uh, so let me see here I think believe we can find out going into our information here Um. Hmm. Maybe in the device manager, it'll tell us, but I, I'd like to see if 
it is actually uh, the exact same panel or not between the two of these. It's not really giving me the details on the display inside of the device manager. I'm in the system properties. I'm looking at the display. We gotta look at the right section of the display info. Do you have HDR enabled? That does make a difference, Jay, if you have an HDR enabled. Um, at least if you are in a game that supports HDR, um, it will make the game noticeably more poppy in color. And we did do our test with the G14 with HDR off. And I think it's currently enabled on the G14, so. Well, let's check that. So here it is, same exact result, like to the numbers um, on the Omen. 100% of sRGB, 97% Adobe, 94% of P3, and of course, when you add 7% extra for the Spider 5 Elite, we're over 100% on Adobe and P3. Brightness though, 405. 404,000 to one contrast ratio. So almost the exact same contrast ratio, almost the exact same brightness, only 15 different for brightness or 14 different for brightness and the exact same color gamut. I mean, if they're not the exact same display, they are very close, like probably designed to the same manufacturer specs. They are the exact same resolution. See here, system information, components, display. Is the monitor information anywhere in here? I was trying to see if like this name here would have it. There maybe, I don't know. Um, someone was saying to pull up DX Diag. Do you think DX Diag is gonna have that information? Display one, drivers. I'm not seeing display. Mon monitor says generic PNP monitor here. It doesn't give us the monitor device name. Yeah, display two didn't show us either. Interesting. Well, either way, exactly the same. Uh, display results, pretty much nearly identical is the way I would describe that. Like basically functionally identical and within variance uh, range for both of them to basically be the exact same monitor um, to where the end user would not notice the difference. Uh, I think the main difference, if there is any, in terms of display quality, it's gonna be that I believe the Omen does not have G-Sync support. See this inside of here? Uh, let's see if you can see that. 
So there's no G-Sync options inside of the Omen 14, but inside of the Zephyrus G14, wait, okay, hold on. This is interesting. I thought there was, okay, now it is. Okay, so you see this? So now we've got G-Sync settings. This is the Zephyrus G14. We can enable G-Sync on the internal laptop display for the G14. So that's a key feature that will make a big difference um, for a lot of games, I think, with this laptop with a 4070D because you're going to go under sub 60 FPS fairly often, I think, with a 4070. Um, in AAA titles, at least. All right. Beautiful. Okay, so that's the display test, the weigh-in. Let's go to build quality and flex test. Am I going to use a cooler during the testing? Uh, we will not be using a cooler. I will be elevating the back of the laptop uh, just like a half inch on both of the laptops. So there will be some elevation. Closing these windows. Getting everything to be closed. Okay. All right. So. Let's stack these laptops on top of each other to start with, okay? So we know the G14 is lighter, all right? G14 is lighter. How does the size compare between the two of them? All right, so G14 coming in at a smaller size. So G14 is about... Making sure these are all lined up exactly on the edges here. So G14, exact same width, but about, about a half inch smaller depth wise, which is impressive considering the G14 is actually higher TDP. And then you lift it up and you can see the difference in width. The G14 just has, I think, a, a bit less width to it. Uh, it's hard to tell in terms of width, but it's it's very close. Width-wise, is very close. I would say the G14 is just slightly thinner based on what I'm seeing here. Um, yeah, because like the overall, like like when you account for the rubber feet on the G14, it adds, it adds a fair bit with these rubber feet to the thickness, especially this back one. That's raised quite a bit. The Omen 14 also has rubber feet, very similar rubber foot actually, similar thickness. But the Omen 14 has got a little bit more of a wedge shape, a little bit thinner in the front versus the back, back being a little bit fatter. And uh, where the G14, is more, it's uniform thickness throughout the entire uh, laptop. So I, I just love the G14's design aesthetically so much more. I think it looks classier. I think it looks higher end um, and uh, more symmetrical. I think the Omen still looks good though. Like this thing doesn't look bad by any means. Um, it's got a nice, overall case and texture to it. Uh, I think the Omen 14 also feels pretty good in the hand. Like this is an all metal chassis top and bottom. I don't think it's aluminum CNC milled aluminum chassis, but it is all metal. Um, it is, it is very nice. I don't, I, I, this could be CNC milled aluminum. I don't know. I have not seen any claims from HP saying it is, but it, it could be. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do a flex test. Well, let's do a hinge test. All right, one finger hinge opening. No problem with the Omen. One finger hinge opening. No problem with the Zephyrus. 
Uh, let's go ahead and get these logged in. The Omen struggling for a moment to log me in. All right, so let's go ahead and do a flex test of the Omen next. Side by side here, I'll try to do the same pressure on both laptops. At the same time, can I do them at the same time? I don't know, this is gonna be a little tricky to do it at the same time, but I'll do the best I can. All right, so on the right side, like, do you see the Omen? It's got a bit of a flex right here, like it concaves in around this touchpad. You can see it really quite noticeably compared to the touchpad. Um, and uh, yeah, whereas over here, no flex. This is just this is just solid, right? This just feels solid. Still feels solid all the way around this entire wrist rest, just solid. This feels solid here, feels solid, feels solid, and then flexy. It gets flexy. Flexy, very flexy. Little bit of flex, little bit of flex. Not flexy, you know? Not very flexy. It's very solid, 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 solid but just a lot of flex through this middle section that is quite noticeable. And the touch, the keyboard also, when you press on it, a bit of flex. So the G14, solid, solid, solid. It's a tiny bit of flex, not much. It's hardly noticeable on the G14 there. Um, solid, 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 solid. Solid. Going to the keyboard, a little bit of flex, a little bit of flex. Overall feels pretty dang solid though. All right. Like this is very, like I'm pushing hard. Definitely a little bit of flex there. If I push the same amount of force into the, the Omen, look at that. Look at how flexy it is by comparison. So HP should have put, I think, more structural support in the middle of the laptop especially along these wrist rests. Keyboard flex, I'm not as worried about it because you're, you're hitting that more loosely. But, but yeah. I would say that the, uh, the G14 is better. Uh, someone wants to see startup time? It's a good question. Let's go ahead and shut these guys down. All right, we'll shut them both down. We'll make sure both systems are plugged in for this test. All right. Startup time, three, two, one. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, looks like the Omen finished first. Very interesting. I kind of want to do another round just to verify the results. Because sometimes Windows settings are getting set up or Windows updates are being applied or whatever. So going through a second restart I think is important. If, you, if you're wanting to verify. Paul A says the Asus G14 just looks better to me. Yeah, I agree. The design on the G14 looks modern and more stylish. Um, let's do another. From a gaming laptop perspective, I would say the Omen 14 is probably better looking when it has the per key RGB look though, but that's only if they have that per key RGB look. So Omen 14 wins again, but the G14 almost identical load in time, about a half second. So that's an example of what I mean. Like there was, I'm pretty sure there was something being applied for the G14 in the last boot up. So I would say it's Omen 14 slightly wins in 
boot up start time. But it's like super minor uh, aspect of a, of a laptop in my opinion. Uh, okay, so let's add this in. Display test is identical. It's a tie. Build quality flex test, G14 wins. Design comparison. Uh, let's do some design comparison, but the G14 wins, in my opinion, for the design. So we talked about um, how it's designed. Uh, the Probably the biggest difference between these two laptops is the rigidity of the design. And then the TDP power limit, which is largely due to the uh, power adapter being a more powerful power adapter for the G14 because USB-C is just not capable of powering the 4070 all the way to a high TDP, uh, even if the cooling system was capable. So from a design perspective, though, like you've got, I think, this just, I love white laptops. I think they look amazing. I like black laptops too. I, I own a black laptop, the Blade 18. But especially when the, the laptop's backlight is off, this just looks old style to me. The, um, you know, the, this keyboard does not look that good when it's off. And when it's on, it doesn't look that good because of the four zone RGB. It doesn't look as good as the perky RGB. Maybe if this was the perky RGB, I'd be like, hey, the Omen 14 looks better. I don't know. But as it is right now, it's hard for me to be like, yeah, get this over the G14 because the style is just the keyboard. Well, the backlight may not be as fancy in the sense of like gamery. It just looks classy, which I think there's an advantage there. But white backlighting right now on top of these white keycaps, it does kind of make the keys look a little harder to read. So realistically, you can turn off the backlight to read them better and less it's dark, then you can turn the backlight back on and see them better that way too. I mean, you can still see it with the backlight enabled, but it can be a little bit hard. Uh, and the backlighting is not as uniform. Um, this is one of the downsides, I think, of the G14. Backlighting with the keys, like look at this, the left side and the right side of this page up, it just doesn't, like the page down, the D and the N are not fully lit at all. So it looks better in really dark environments. There's like slightly lit in dark environments, but then this like brighter environment, it just doesn't look evenly lit at all. So this is an area that Asus can definitely improve the, the keyboard backlighting. Um, from a design perspective as well, I think the touchpad on the G14 is just better. Like this is a better implementation. It's larger. I like the square implementation. There's no space wasted at all on here. And uh, it's, it's just super smooth, easy click. I like the touchpad better than the Omen 14 trackpad that has this, uh, you know, it's got this kind of metal rim edging around it. And because it's kind of bendy with the metal rim edging, sometimes the trackpad just doesn't feel as solidly mounted as the G14 trackpad. So from a design perspective, I think this also doesn't look as good because of it's not seamless with uh, the top and bottom edges. So it's another like minor thing, but I think it adds a lot to the design ethos of the G14 and more of like, just like the pure style of the G14, which matches, I think the square and not elongated sides and bottoms, like it's more squared off, right? So um, in terms of like, it's, it's, a, it's a flat rectangle from the side. Uh, any thoughts on thermal repasting? Uh, Serge says, random question, would you do any thermal replacement videos on any new laptops, maybe try liquid metal? I think it'd be fun to do it. Um, I haven't uh, made one of those videos yet, but it'd be fun to do. I would, I would look forward to doing it. It'd be interesting. I think sometimes you'd repaste it and you get worse results if it had a good factory paste job. Uh, but when it's bad factory paste job, you might get some significant gains in temps. So, okay. So in my opinion, from a design, the G14 wins. Software comparison, all right? So the G14, we, are, we have two primary softwares with the G14. 
Um, and a few accessory support softwares. We've got Armory Crate. This is a application that lets you see some CPU stats and also lets you tune the laptop. You got GPU mode, you can enter a dedicated mode, you can do an eco mode, um, an optimized mode. You know, if you go into the eco mode, it can disable the discrete GPU. So that way it does not activate when you're on battery mode, which is nice to have that as an option. Standard mode lets you switch between them and ultimate mode keeps it just to the G NVIDIA GPU. Um, in terms of customization, you have four different fan modes. You have silent, performance, turbo, and manual. And these fan modes are pretty substantial differences in terms of performance. Um, it will adjust the fan noise significantly on turbo and on manual. You can set them the fan noise with a fan curve adjustment right here. Uh, and it even lets you set the power limits for your CPU. If your CPU is overheating and you want to prevent it from getting as hot, you can adjust your power limit down to a lower power limit. It'll reduce performance a little bit. Uh, usually depending if it's a GPU bound game, it won't. But if, uh, if it's, if you're getting like up to the thermal throttle range and you don't want it to be that high and you're on max fans already, you can just be like, okay, let's just drop the power limits down to say 40 watts or 30 watts or something. And you'll still have good performance, but temperatures will be way more in line. Uh, for the GPU, you can also set an overclock inside the system here. Uh, 50 slash 100 is the default overclock for the base and the boost. Uh, for for your base clock and your memory clock. And then you have a dynamic boost of 25 watts that's adjustable. You can set this to go up and down. You can also thermal target the laptop so that it doesn't get as hot uh, on the GPU. If you don't want it to go over say uh, 85 degrees, you can have a thermal throttle at 85 or 80, 80 degrees, whatever you want. Um, and then there is a third system fan in here as well. So you can, you can set the fan profiles for each of the fans. So if one of the fans are making extra noise uh, and you don't like that noise or, or one of the CPU or the GPU fan is not working as well, you want to amp that fan speed, you can adjust just that fan speed alone without messing with the GPU fan speed, for example. Um, if you want to apply these settings, you do have to click the little check mark and then it will apply. When the fan profile curve is all up at the top up here, it means that the fan will run at 100% max fans. If I set a curve more like this, it's going to only ramp the fans if the temperature of the laptop gets hotter. So this is more of a traditional fan curve. Uh, for example, if you want to be max fans, just raise the first one up to the top and it will set max fans. Now, um, in terms of, oh, you know what we can do too? Uh, I want to add another test into our test today. We will do a speaker test, side-by-side -side speaker test. I like it. Okay, so um, overall, uh, controlling this laptop is easy. Uh, lots of different ways to customize it, improve performance, and it's primarily right here in Armory Crate. There is, however, another application called My Asus, which is this one. It allows you to upgrade your warranty, set your battery percentage to be more conservative. So if you want um, to enable battery care mode, you can set this to enable and it'll stop at 80% capacity. Uh, if you do that, it will help prevent the battery from being worn down as much. Um, you can also enable instant full charge, which will charge the battery to 100% as fast as possible um, without trying to preserve the quality of your battery life. Like normally you wanna charge at a more reasonable rate, but you can do a quick rapid charge if you're like, I gotta get on the airplane, you can enable that. Um, so yeah, there's a few options in here, but there's pretty much, the only reason to go into my Asus is to change your battery cons conservation mode or to get a system update for a new BIOS. That's this is one of the areas where you can get your BIOS. Um, another update area is inside of Armory Crate. There is the update center. Um, and we can see that we're pretty much up to date here, but um, you click check for updates and it'll update there. Asus will also send you updates 
directly through Windows Update to update the BIOS and other things inside of the laptop. So keep that in mind. Now for the HP Omen, we had a few different, we have a couple different softwares, but the main one is the HP Omen Gaming Hub, which you can use to have an overlay in your games. You can shop for games. So here's the overlay right here. It looks like Shift F2 is where you access that. Um, you can actually use this as a game launching tool if you want to. Asus does this as well in the Armory Crate. In general, I don't really recommend doing that stuff from these third-party applications. I think it's better to organize it inside of Steam or whatever main launcher you have just because it's easier to save favorites and move favorites from laptop to laptop when you upgrade your laptop. That's the main reason. But if you plan on keeping it a long time, then it's fine to do it inside of this control software. Um, so inside of here is where you actually can control the laptop. So you can either click on the HP Omen 14 Transcend or click on the left side down here. You have system vitals. You have lighting control software. So you can open the Omen Light Studio if you want to do more further customization of the laptop lighting. And there is lighting control in the Armory Crate application as well. Um, so here you can set your each zone and your color and do a few different modes. Doesn't really make it look that much better. Under performance control, you have eco, balanced, and performance modes. You also have this kind of small and hard to see advanced settings button. And this advanced settings button is very important uh, for your overall performance because this is going to boost your TDP of your GPU by 15 watts. So 15 watts additional boost over the base of 45 gets you up to 60 watts. And that's like a 25% boost to performance probably at least. Like it's technically 33% more wattage, but you're not always gonna see the full 60 watts. It's if the CPU is not sucking all the juice up, then it'll prioritize this additional boost. The main issue I found when you disable this is that the CPU, the Intel Ultra 9, just sucks up almost more wattage than the GPU, even when it doesn't need to, and it kills your GPU performance pretty bad. So I would highly recommend keeping this on all the time unless you're playing a CPU-bound game, and then you might want to turn it off for that specific game. Um, so a CPU-bound specific game would be something like, uh, I don't know, Warzone 2 or Fortnite, um, or if you're on playing an eSports game on low settings, basically. Uh, that'd probably be the main situation. You would want to disable it, potentially, depending on the game. Some games like Apex Legends still use a lot of GPU power, and you might get less FPS in certain titles by disabling that. It's just going to depend. Now, for this laptop, you have auto fans, max fans, and manual fans. Inside of manual fans, you can set your manual fan ramp, and this will control both laptop fans inside of a curve. So you do have some fan control here. It's not as integrated as the G14 laptop control, but it's it's still there. And I like I think it's very important to have some kind of manual fan curves for advanced users. So I like to see that. Auto is going to generally do just fine, but if you want to do max performance, I would recommend using the maximum speed for best performance in temps so you don't ever run into thermal throttling or run into it as infrequently as possible. Um, okay, there is a graphics switcher tool. You can set to integrate a graphics only mode. This will improve your battery life by preventing your NVIDIA GPU from turning on. Um, and in hybrid mode, it will switch between NVIDIA and the integrated Intel Arc GPU in hybrid mode. Now you can't control it and say, go to NVIDIA only mode, which I think is a little bit disappointing. So if you run into that problem where you're running in the wrong application is, is the application is opening with the wrong GPU, that's when you go to your Windows graphics settings. So I just type in GRA in the Windows search button. And here we can select applications and change which GPU is being used to launch that application. If Windows is confused about which application, this did happen 
with the Omen 14, I had to add a couple applications into that graphics launcher. I'm just mentioning that because um, it's kind of disappointing that I had to mess with that. Um, so automatically enable dynamic refresh rate when system is running on battery. There's an option for turning that on. It sounds like it'd be a good idea to do that. And there is key assignments as well, I guess, if you want to change what one of the keyboard buttons does, which is cool, I guess, all right? So that's pretty much the HP Omen software. I believe there is an audio software as well. You know, we're about to do an, a speaker test, so we want to try to, let's see here, which, what is the audio software? I believe we ran it during our initial audio test. Maybe we didn't, maybe there isn't one. Dolby, nope, DTS. DTS Sound Unbound. Okay, so this is the audio software uh, and it doesn't do much. This, this does not do much. You can configure for headphone mode Learn more about gaming, DTS, audio encoder. I don't know, I, I don't think this really is gonna help you much for improving your audio experience in here, but there's some spatial sound controls in here. Um, yeah. Yeah, well now if we go to Dolby Access inside of the G14 for our audio control, you'll be able to see Inside of here, we have dynamic game, movie, music, and there's multiple different options inside of here. Um, so overall, I would probably just leave it on dynamic unless you're like, ooh, this doesn't sound as good as it could. And then you might wanna switch to music mode and switch it to like a balanced or warm mode. Like I don't know if you're trying to listen to piano music versus rock music or something, something very different from one another, you can notice a difference um, in terms of the EQ in particular. But uh, in general, I would say just leave it on dynamic and it's a pretty balanced full audio sound from the G14. So we're gonna go to our music and we're going to open up our Peter Spacey Roar and we're gonna move these laptops back a little bit and get the sound decibel meter set up. Show a Now the Zephyrus G14 should have better speaker quality. At least in theory. But let's find out. We're gonna make sure that both of these laptops have some desk under them to reverberate the sound back out to us. So they both have, they're both well under the wood. And we're going to do our sound decibel meter. We'll do it right in front, oh, we'll do it, we'll do it in the middle. So we can bounce back and forth. And I'll hold the mic also in the middle here. All right, so here's Peter Spacey Roar on the Zephyrus G14 first, and let's get a uh, baseline audio. Forty point seven. Let's go ahead and start with Peter Spacey Roar on the G14. Very good bass, very good clarity all around. Um, one of the best laptop speakers I've ever tested. Peter Spacey Roar from HP Omen 14.
So if you if you're watching the decibel meter at all, you can hear or you can see the audio is much louder on the G14. It was at least four to five decibels louder, which is significant difference in audio. Um, I felt like when I'm hearing the G14, the bass smacks me in the face. Where the Omen 14, I can hear the bass. It's noticeable. It's not gone. It's not absent, but it's not like hitting me in the face the same way. You know, like it's it's smacking me on the G14. Fade a day on Half Life. I just want to let the audio play. It sounds so good. All right, fade a day on Half Life. say that the um the audio sounds very clear on the omen 14 but it is not nearly as loud and not nearly as full the bass in particular is lacking the mids aren't as full it's a big difference okay deuce williams la la love you like I did bump the decibel meter for just a second there. La La Love You Like here on the Omen 14. Here we go. So overall, I would say that the um, Omen 14 speaker is good speaker for a gaming laptop, especially a 14-inch one, uh, but it just is not in the same ballpark even as the G14 speakers. It is a massive difference. Um, the G14 speakers are some of the most competitive speakers to a MacBook, an Apple laptop that I've heard, uh, whereas the Omen 14 is like just like above average for a gaming laptop, but nowhere near the best. Uh, if I were to rate them, I believe I rated the G14 around like a 9.2 or something in that range, just a little bit worse than my Blade 18, very good overall speakers. And the Omen 14, it was like 8.5 or something like that, somewhere in that range. It's still good, but it's just, it, it lacks the volume, it lacks the punch, it lacks the, uh, the cojones of a good speaker system, I guess you wanna, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it is what it is, okay. All right, let's go to our next test. Let's see here, what do we got next? Uh, so software comparison, I would say for software, the G14 wins, speaker test, G14 wins. We're going into Cinebench R20. You guys wanna do fan noise test? Let's just do a quick fan noise test at max fans and see which, which one gets louder, all right? So we'll set the G14 to max fans first. All right, so G14 is going to max fans right now. It takes a little while. The G14. The G14 ramps its fans very slowly. It doesn't do it super fast.
you can see it, it's climbing up gradually. It, it sounds much better, I think, to the end user to have the fans gradually change like this. The only downside is temps can spike temporarily into thermal throttle range if the fans don't activate quickly enough. So I kind of wish it had a little faster activation curve. So 56.3 is max fans for the Omen. Let's go ahead, or sorry, for the G14, 56.3, give or take. Uh, let's go ahead and do the Omen 14 next. See what the max fans are like with the Omen. The Omen fans do ramp up a little bit faster. I do like that. Canned Fruit says, this is totally unrelated, but the HPO, HW Info 64 is displaying the wrong core temps. Do you know why this could be? It could be reading the wrong sensor levels or something like that. It probably is most likely because you haven't updated H, uh, HW Info to the latest version would be the most likely cause. Fifty-two point three for the decibels. So the Omen fourteen is definitely quieter um, overall. Okay, <clears throat> at least it's quieter in the sense that uh, how fast the, the fans can go at max speed. In terms of actual gaming loads and actual gaming temps, it's gonna vary, right? If you put this into performance mode. G14 is going to be very quiet. If you put the Omen 14 in balance mode, it's going to be very quiet. It's going to be quieter in the 40, like 45, 46 range for both of them. So um, the bigger question is what would the actual performance look like in both of them at those temperatures? Uh, okay, so we have got fan noise test added. Let's see. Fan noise is the Omen 14 wins in theory, uh, at least for max fan. I guess I could add max fan fan noise. In a sense, it loses as well because, you know, it's actually not able to go as high of an RPM. So in a sense, that's not as good. Uh, okay, Cinemage R23. Let's get into that next. Uh, I believe we're ready to get this set up for our side-by-side benchmarking as well so let's do that i've got a split view here gonna need to center the camera up put the laptop side by side get them elevated as well so we've got both of them being raised up about the same amount just about a half inch for both laptops oh yeah 
Ja. Okay, and uh, we'll probably want to turn this just a little bit more this way. There we go. So G14 is on the left, Omen 14 is on the right. All right, and for this guy, we can crunch that in a little bit. Cool, all right. Um, we're gonna go to, we're gonna set both of these laptops to max performance mode. And the, they're both set to that already. Let's go ahead and get Cinebench R23 opened up. There we go. How is that looking? Pretty close. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Beautiful, and we're going to get HW info opened as well on both of them. So HW info, of course, is used to, uh, we're gonna use that to monitor temperatures and core speeds, power limits, all of that. Well, we are benchmarking let me make sure process lasso is set up as well here. Scoot this over just a little bit. It's looking pretty amazing right now. This is good. All right. Let's get to the bench, R23 again. Good. All right, let's just run this real quick. Okay, we're already set to above normal, that's good. All right. So one of the things you'll notice in the initial comparison here is that uh, the G14 has less cores and threads compared to the Omen 14, okay? Um, so that's one of the key differences between the two of them. The Omen 14 has the primary advantage that the additional cores, there's a lot... Basically, so there's eight cores, 16 threads on the Zephyrus G14. You can see those cores right here. These are all hyper-threaded. On the Omen, we have one, two, three, four, five, six P cores. Those are only hyper-threaded cores. And then we have an additional eight E cores. So six P cores at hyper-threaded, so 12 threads, six cores, and then eight E cores, theoretically, 
Additional cores and threads will help multi-score rendering more. So you can see in our initial first run, 17,000 versus 17,700. Let's try a second run. See how we do. All right, so peak boost clock, 4.8 gigahertz on the primary cores for the Ryzen. For the Intel Ultra 9, our boost clock for the P cores, only about 4.1 on the fastest, and then the slower P cores are at 3.9. So basically we have a, like a linear down ramping with the Omen 14 cores with certain cores being the higher priority cores at slightly higher, slightly higher clock speeds. And then we also have two NPU cores, um, I believe on both of these systems, but they, yeah, they're basically like super ultra high efficiency cores, not really used in the rendering of Cinematic R23 as much, mainly used for things like um, AI enhanced webcam background replacements and other AI tools inside of applications. So I haven't done a deep dive yet on those. So 17,286 for the Ryzen, 17,779 for the Intel Ultra 9. Let's get another run. Let's take a look at temps and power limit draws. So our temps with the Ryzen spiked. It did reach 95 degrees at one point. With the Ryzen, we did surpass 99. Uh, we went all the way to 101 at our peak max temps. Currently at 100 degrees for our peak temp on the Intel. 92, almost to the thermal throttle. Pretty sure 95 degrees is the thermal throttle range for the Ryzen chip versus 100 is the thermal throttle range for the Intel Ultra 9. So both of them are bouncing into their thermal throttle limits. Um, so this means that a laptop cooler could theoretically slightly boost our CPU performance. Let's run them again. Very similar scores again for our third run. All right, so overall power draw We're looking currently at 1.1. Where is our total power draw? Oh, we're not running it in the background right now. Okay. Power draw coming in at 80 watts almost exactly. So that's our peak power limit on the Zephyrus G14. Power draw over here on the Omen, 63 watts, 65 watts. 17,100 that time with the Omen 14. Let's see, our peak max watts is 81 right now. 82 for our max max that we've had during our whole testing. 74, because we are thermal throttling, so we would be at 80 watts, but it's dropping down because of the thermal throttling on the Omen right now. The Zephyrus G14, 17,250. The G14, let's observe the power limit. We are hitting 80 watts. We are hitting 80 watts just shy of thermal throttle. So we're maintaining the 80 watt threshold, I think better than on the Omen. The Omen is bouncing down to 62. So so yeah, notice that our score now is worse on the Omen 14 after it's thermal throttling. 17,000, we dropped about 600 points down. But without thermal throttling, the Omen 14 was a little bit faster. The thermal throttling on the G14 uh, is not affecting our performance much at all because the power limit is staying so consistent. Um, but might be a little bit because we were at 80 watts, now we're at 76, 17,127. Uh, so this is a good example of like how thermal throttling can reduce your performance by a little bit, but not by a huge margin. Um, overall, these temps are on the warm side. They're on the hot side. We are in an air-conditioned room right now. So if you're in a hot environment, you're going to run into thermal throttling even worse, primarily on the Omen 14 being worse thermal throttling uh, so far. But both of them 
definitely thermal throttling to some degree. Um, overall performance is almost identical in Cinemage R23. I have done Cinemage R24 as well. So let's take a look there after this last test is done on the Zephyrus G14. This is after multiple runs back to back. Uh, gives us a good idea of what the thermal throttle performance is like. 17,117, 17,237. So very good performance overall for both systems when it comes to CPU performance. Um, so no issue there. Do they exhaust from the sides? No, neither laptop exhausts from the side. Both of them have a uh, rear exhaust, the G14 exhaust hitting the screen where the Omen 14 exhausts out the back. So very similar dual rear exhausts on both of these though. All right, so Cinebench R24, let's pull these numbers up for both of these. And this is what I got for doing my own runs with Cinebench R24. Can I make it a little bit bigger? So very similar results. A little bit faster GPU performance on the Zephyrus G14. A little bit faster multi-score performance on the Omen 14, 962 versus 989. Single core performance also a little bit faster on the Omen 14. The Intel Ultra 9 being faster at one core being active compared to the, like it's, it, the way Intel makes their chips is that they can let one core go to a higher clock speed than the Ryzen chip which is better at powering all the cores at a fairly high clock speed. So it's interesting how Intel's architecture has, I think a little bit better um, variability for like single core applications and single core games. Cause some games can only use one core and those games are gonna benefit from the ultra nine processor a little bit more. Um, but generally speaking, these are all pretty close. I mean, this is 85 versus 107. That's a pretty significant difference. That's like uh, 22 points, about a 25% increase in single core performance. Very interesting. Which one had better temps? They're both thermal throttling surge, uh, but I would say the G14 throttled a little bit less compared to its max wattage. The, the, the Omen 14, when start, they both go to 80 watts, but the Omen 14 throttles down to about 65, 70 watts, whereas the G14 only throttled down to 76 watts, only had a small wattage drop. Almost unnoticeable in terms of wattage drops. Okay, so uh, next we have our ADA64 RAM speed test, which we have ran uh, before. I ran this before the live stream so we can get the results more quickly. So we've got our read and writes as well as our latency. All right, so this is of course Ryzen versus Intel architecture because the RAM needs to integrate into the architecture. Both are LPDDR5 RAM. Um, this is at 6400. This one, it doesn't say what it's at um, for the Omen. So I'm not sure what it's actually running at, but I believe it's at least 5,600, if not 6,400 as well. Uh, some, it might even run up to 7,400 because some of the specs sheets online say 7,400. I'm not sure though, because it's not coming up in ADA64. Um, this is usually one of the most advanced tools for determining what your RAM speed is running at. Um, okay. In terms of timing, Timings, this timings looks tighter. 1715, 1734 versus 8068, 68, 160. Very interesting difference in terms of timings. Um, our overall read speed is much faster on the Omen, 90,000 versus 49,000. Um, I think that's very interesting. Scooch this over just a hair.
and aim to the right a little bit. There we go. Uh, write speed was faster on the G14. Copy speed was again faster on the Omen. Latency, which is very important for gaming, uh, for reducing 1% lows, was better on the G14, though. So these read, write, and copies, more important for game loading, um, whereas latency, more important for ensuring no stuttering or less stuttering. Um, L L1 cache speed, much faster on the G14, uh, at least for read speed. Very similar write and copy speeds. Uh, read L2 is going to be faster on the G14 again. Again, faster for the write. Again, faster for the copy. So the L2 cache, much faster. L3 cache is again faster on the G14, 800, 850 versus 650 and 381. Then 775 versus 5. 63, 553. And the nanosecond latency also much faster for some reason on the L3 cache with the Ryzen chip here. So um, overall, RAM speed, I think I would give it to the G14. It's pretty close though. It's not like a massive difference. I would say Cinebench R23 and R24 performance, I give that win to the Omen 14. RAM speed, I give that win to the G14. So let's go ahead and update our benchmark battle here. R23, Omen 14 wins, R24, Omen 14 wins. Time Spy, we haven't done that yet. Crystal this mark, we haven't done that yet. Uh, Ram Speed, G14 wins, all right. Um, Crystal Disc Mark, let's go ahead and do that next because we have the screenshots of that. Uh, let's see here. Can we just... There we go. And can we just... There we go. Um, so... There's your RAM... Uh, let's see. I gotta go here. There's your SSD speeds. Um, overall read and write much faster on the omen 14 very interesting but higher quality drive on the omen 14 uh at least for the the larger sequential files the smaller you go the less of a difference between the two and actually the g14 starts to win out a few times here um in some of these low uh smaller file sizes um overall both of these are plenty fast so where I don't think you'd notice any difference um, in terms of load speeds, but Crystal Disc Mark, I would say it's a tie is what I would say because we have trade-offs between the G14 and the Omen 14. Theoretically, the primary read and write is a little faster on the Omen 14, but then it's a little slower um, in for the smaller files for the Omen 14. So overall, I would say no clear winner for disk speed. Um, let's get into time spy testing. Here we're gonna be able to see an overlay of our we're gonna go stay offline. So today, our game list, we had to um, keep everything to on uh, offline only applications. So no Hell Divers today, no Apex Legends. I had to replace those games with some single player games um, for the testing. But I did test at least Apex Legends with both these laptops. Uh, previously, I think Hell Divers as well. I'm not sure if I did that on the G14 or not, but we'll be testing 10 games. You can see the games list right here. All right. 
Make sure Afterburner is running on both of the systems. Afterburner, MSI Afterburner is the tool I use to boost the, uh, to, demo, to show the, uh, the performance overlay. If you need to have a performance overlay in games and stuff like that, I'd recommend using that. Very interesting. It seems like the G14 display is brighter. I don't know. Maybe not. It's hard to tell. They're very, both displays extremely bright. I've got a better angle on the G14 display, I guess, because I'm more, a little more in front of it. But, uh, but yeah, here we go. So TimeSpy, a synthetic benchmark tool that's designed to give you a great idea of overall performance for your GPU and CPU within modern games. It's not going to give you perfect, but it's going to give you a good summary result of what you can expect for your CPU GPU performance inside of these games. Um, the only name says, hey, Brandon, glad to catch this stream. I got an open box 2024 G14 delivered today. I'll be opening it soon. Let's hope for the best. Dude, congrats. Open box is uh, usually a fantastic steal of a deal, but it does vary. There can be some variances. There's our overlay for the G14. I might need to make some adjustments to placements on the overlay to make sure that everything is visible. Uh, I do need to make some adjustments. So it looks like I need to make the, the Omen overlay a little bit smaller. Let's go down to 200. And we'll go down to 12 for our size. And for the G14, we just need to scoot it a little more to the right. So that means I need to just go over here and be like 1300 for our start distance. And let's try that out. I do wanna make sure the overlays are lined up as possible. All right, so again, both laptops are in max fan, max performance mode. Hammer Joe says, does the Zephyrus have any problems with the AMD graphics? I had to RMA mine because it would not play videos from sites. I've had no problems with the uh, Radeon GPU and I have used the browser Microsoft Edge to play YouTube videos. I've done that live on the stream, so I don't think we had that problem. Hammer, did you uh, were you able to fully update everything? I, that a driver issue. It sounds like a driver issue would be the most likely scenario. It's interesting. The G14 is coming in and loading much faster. If you haven't noticed, we're we're loading much faster on the G14 than we are on the Omen. All right, so here we are. You can see the FPS difference is substantially higher on the G14. In the 70s here, walking down the hallway, 90 watts of power through the GPU, 2160 for the boost clock, 1965 for our boost clock over here, and only 62 watts on the right. I'm not sure if either of these... Uh, I believe the G14 has a 50 slash 100 overclock. The Jeffers, the, the Omen 14, I don't know if it has an overclock applied. We should probably make sure we have the exact same overclock before we take these results too seriously. Um, so let me go ahead and cancel this. And let's do for an overclock. Let's set the same overclock. And we'll do a minor overclock on both systems. So we'll do 150, 150. That should be something that is doable on basically every single laptop out there with an RTX. Forty seventy. so using MSI Afterburner to set our overclock to 150, 150 for both laptops. 
I want as apples to apples comparison as possible, which is why we're running at max fans on both laptops. Uh, you know, should be the same exact driver. Uh, we are because I just updated them yesterday, and latest BIOS updates from the manufacturers uh, and everything. So, like, I really want everything to be as identical as possible for these tests. Uh, let's see here. Keanu Steve says, got the Legion Slim 16 RTX 4070 for $1,600 in Germany. Got on sale. Was it a good deal? So I would say that uh, most likely a 4070 for $1,600 Slim 16. In America, that price would probably be around twelve to $1,300 would be a great sale. In Germany, sixteen hundred is probably a good sale because everything's about twenty percent more expensive over there. So yeah, sixteen hundred is probably a good price, Keanu. Um, at least not like terrible, you know. Okay, like it, 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 would, it would fall at least in good deal territory, pretty sure. Um, all right, so now same exact overclocks, twenty two, twenty three hundred, twenty two fifty, versus. 2085 2100 so we're getting significantly more boost clock on the g14 90 watts of power on the g14 63 64 65 watts on the omen 14 gpu temps are warmer on the g14 at 70 versus 58 cpu wattage is interesting 10 watts for the ryzen 28 watts for the intel ultra 9 so the same total watts going through the system on both laptops, but more watts going through the GPU on the G14 than the CPU, the C Omen 14. The CPU is just taking a lot more of the wattage. So here we are in another test for the Zephyrus G14, the second graphics test in TimeSpy. Again, 90 watts being utilized on the RTX 4070. And over here on the right, only 58 watts, 65. Okay, now we're getting up to 65 watts. It took a little while to update that wattage. But the boost clock, definitely lower. Temps are lower. You know, this is the kind of thing that makes you go like, well, why didn't they just shift more wattage from the CPU up to the GPU? You get more, more boost. I, I feel like through a software update, they might actually be able to boost more performance on the Omen 14. If they could just shift 10... 10 to 15 more watts from the Intel up to the GPU, at least in GPU bound games, I bet you'd see a significant performance boost. Um, very interesting overall. I'm going to start the, I just refreshed our GPU frame rate averages. It's not going to be exactly the same. We'll see our final score. That's what will really matter. Interesting. Our VRAM usage is higher on the G14 for some reason. And our memory clock is also much higher on the G14. 7,000 for our memory clock on the Omen. They, they tuned it to not have the memory boost clock be nearly as high. Very interesting. Um, this is the CPU test now on the G14. Everything's loading faster on the G14 so far. Very interesting. Reaching spicy temps on the Omen, 101 degrees. <clears throat> we break, we broke the 12,000 mark on the Zephyrus G14. Let's see what we get on the Omen, 10,463. It's pretty good for an over, you know, uh, considering the wattage, but it's not nearly as good as the Zephyrus G14. Zephyrus G14 taking the cake by 1550 points. So 1550 point difference approximately or exactly actually. Um al almost? No. Yeah. No. 1570? I don't know. Let's see here. Math is hard. Let's see here. Uh 
Yeah, 1570 points. Interesting. So overall performance for the GPU, much better on the, the G14, slower on the Omen 14. But the CPU score being better on the Omen 14, 11,941, 11,130. So very interesting results so far. These efforts, G14 though, definitely wins for our Time Spy GPU test. So Time Spy GPU, G14 wins. All right, we're moving into Baldur's Gate 3. Game of the year from uh, last year. Let's see what kind of FPS we can get in Baldur's Gate 3. So just because the G14 is faster in Time Spy, it doesn't mean that it's going to be faster in every game, especially since we have Intel CPU architecture versus AMD CPU architecture. Wow, that is loud. Well, let's go ahead and mute, mute the audio on both systems. Um, so Baldur's Gate 3, action RPG, turn-based, very fun game, really interesting characters, uh, and customization, lots of things and ways to beat the game and play the game. Super fun game overall. Really think this game is worth playing if you like. If you enjoy RPGs, this is probably one of the best RPGs ever made. And some people call it a dating simulator because it's got so much focus on the um the relationships between the characters there's lots of fun things you can do with the different characters and getting to know them and all that so all right so i'm going to quickly double check the settings we're going to be setting the ultra graphics preset at the full 2880 by 1800 resolution and then we're going to set dlss to quality okay ultra graphics preset dlss set to quality We're going to go to do this, the Omen 14. We're going to set the same thing. Ultra graphics preset. And DLSS set to quality. Beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and load into our benchmark for the save game on both systems. Where is it? There we go. Let me go ahead and disable the lights behind me too here. So there's less interference with the images for the omen in particular. Okay, so uh, let's zoom in. Perfect. This is looking good. Got to get things realigned here. All right, so out of the gate, I just set the benchmark to activate. 140 FPS for our initial average on the G14. 100 for our 1% low. 128 on the Omen 14. 115 for our 1% low. So 1% low looking a little better on the Omen initially. Let's go ahead and and turn at the same time. 1% low, again, still looking better on the Omen, 70 versus 50. But our average FPS being better with the 
Zephyrus G14. Pretty noticeable difference in terms of overall FPS just being higher on the G14 so far. 130, 45 for our 1% low stutters. 57, the 1% lows, definitely better on the Omen with the Intel CPU. But the average is definitely better on the G14. So after this guy does his turn, I believe that's everyone, I think. Let's see here. All right, and that concludes our bench. So 129.42 versus 117.54. G14, I'd say wins, but the 1% low stutters being better on the Omen, it's close. It makes it closer, all right? But I would say the G14 wins that just for a, the average, I think, is the higher priority um, in my opinion. So G14 won the Baldur's Gate 3. Let's go to the next game. Should be Cyberpunk 2077. I don't think that the settings we'll be testing at will be good for either laptop. <laughs> You'll want to tweak it actually for both laptops. Because we'll be in like the 40s, I think. But Baca says, you have any contact with Asus, Intel, NUC to review NUC laptop kit? I've got contacts at Asus, but I'm not sure about the NUC laptop kit. Best value for laptop always going to be an NUC kit laptop. Interesting. What does NUC stand for? NUC laptop? Is that a non-branded? I'm not sure. Okay, so we're going to explain, Baco, what is an NUC laptop or a NUC? A NUC laptop. I don't know if it's, that's the right term for it, whatever. Uh, so I did double check our graphic settings before this, but let's do it one more time. Um, so full screen 2880 by 1800 is correct. Our graphics. We are in the exact same settings for both. Uh, ray tracing on ultra and ray tracing on ultra and DLSS on quality with frame generation enabled on both. All right, this is, click the G14 a little bit after, but I think the G14 will load a little bit quicker overall anyway, so should be okay. All right, so GPU wattage, very close in this one. The CPU taking 35 watts, 41 watts for the omen so the intel cpu only taking about five more watts for the cyberpunk 2077 this is bringing our gpu wattage for the 4070 down closer to the g uh the omen 14 so 61 watts versus 53 watts our overall average is very close only differed by two right now with fps being slightly higher for the omen laptop for the first test today but, if, I mean, if we're within one FPS, I'm just going to call it a tie uh, at the end. If we've got more, like, I want more than, like, a 1% to 2% variance, basically, for it to be a noticeable improvement. Overall, currently, though, it's 2 FPS average improvement on the Intel. 40 versus 43. 44 versus 40, that's pretty significant. 23 FPS with the Intel CPU versus 20 FPS 
on the cyberpunk that's the power of i think a high uh, more intel optimized gaming cpu that's what that is okay so 20 fps versus 23 omen 14 actually wins the cyberpunk test interesting i wasn't expecting it to win any of them quite frankly but the omen 14 wins cyberpunk 2077 what that's impressive okay so congrats to omen on its first gaming win let's see if it can pull any more wins off with the intel cpu next up is dead space Calumet says, Omen laptops suck as they have a tendency to limit voltage to the CPU and GPU no matter what model you buy. BIOS won't let you go over the power limit set by the manufacturers of the laptop. I mean, that's true for most, most laptops. Most of them limit your wattage. You can't get max wattage on the 4070, even in the Asus. Like, you can't go to 140 watts on the G14 because it's, you know, it's limited. All right, so just verifying our settings. I did set this earlier, but... I just want to always double check. So max resolution on the G14 and quality DLSS on quality ultra graphic settings is correct. DLSS on quality ultra graphic settings and max resolution. Perfect. All right. So here we go with our averages. Okay. So, first thing I notice, G14 GPU is pulling higher wattage. 85 watts over here on the G14 versus 62. So a 20-ish watts advantage, 23 watts advantage to the G14 again. Our memory boost clock also is actually identical in this game. 8150, 8150. Okay, that's good. I'm glad we're getting, because the memory boost clock was not high enough last time um, for some reason. VRAM, boom. We're actually using more VRAM on the G14 for some reason, loading into this game exactly the same. FPS, 64 FPS on the G14 versus 58 gives the G14 a sizable win here already. All right. 31 for a 1% low, also higher on the G14. Uh, very interesting. We can try to get us out into the same view here. All right, so still the G14, higher FPS on average. 1% low has shifted, though. It's almost identical now, 25 versus 26. But the average FPS has gotten to be a 5 FPS gap now, 64 versus 59. So with 1% lows being so close, I would say that this is basically a tie in terms of one overall average FPS and performance. Let's go ahead and rotate these down towards our benchmarking destination. Center up, center up. We're going to reset our FPS counters and we're walking. All right, so this is our technical identical walking test um, for the G14 and the Omen 14. Right now, five FPS higher on the G14 still. 1% low is actually also higher on the G14, but very close. 1% low being 30 versus 28, that's not a statistically significant difference. You run the test a bunch of times, it might be um, 
better or worse on either one. Overall, 1% 1 lows in dead space, not particularly reliable. All right, so 67 FPS on average for the G14 versus 61. That is a significant difference for the G14. G14 takes dead space. Another W for the G14. On to Dragon's Dogma 2. The new game that is super not optimized, but I'm testing it because it's trending right now and a lot of people want to see how badly optimized it is. And this is another game where the Omen 14 could actually win because it's a very CPU-bound game. Um, so would not be surprised if the Omen 14 matches or beats the G14 in this one, maybe. Should be pretty close, though. Hard to say. We'll see. Uh, N13 says, is there a way for you to also test FH5? Uh, let's see here. What is FH5? FH5? Not sure. You have to let me know what FH5 is. Uh, I was thinking Final Fantasy, but that's not it. Uh, Forza Horizon 5? Is that what it is? Uh, but no. Okay, yeah, Forza Horizon 5. Got it. Well, I'm, I'm glad I figured it out on my own. All right, I did double-check the settings on this before to make sure that we have the exact settings, but let's double-check our settings one more time. So you can see should be exactly DLSS on quality on both of them. Ray tracing is on on both of them, and then it's the ultra preset are the, high, the highest settings for default. Aside from that, there are a couple settings I think you can turn on, but they're basically the same in terms of overall uh, like very uh, ultra preset or like the highest. So there's a default graphics that's high, but it doesn't quite set everything to max. Just know this is like 98% as high as settings as you can possibly set in Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, but not quite max, max, max. Okay, so here we are. We are looking off into the wilderness right now in Dragon's Dogma 2. And the G14 is absolutely crushing it right now. 60 FPS. 50 for our 1% low versus 53 and 45 for the Omen 14. Um, definitely higher FPS for the G14. And again, looking at the CPU wattage, 13 versus 35. 20 more watts for the G14. And that's translating right now into about 25-ish watts more on the GPU. And also higher boost clock on the GPU as well. So pretty significant there. Interesting VRAM usage is basically maxed on the G14 versus only 65, 6.5 gigs on the Omen. Not sure why that is. Interesting. So let's go ahead and try uh, going into the city, I think. So I think I'm an outlaw right now, so we might get attacked as we walk towards the city. I'm not sure. I'm going to reset our benchmark averages and walk. So we are doing the exact same. I'm not sure. Can I get over this? Okay, there we go. All right. FPS averages coming more in line now that we got uh, running towards the city. Very similar, 57 FPS for our average. 30 for a 1% low, still a little bit better on the G14. Average also now coming up a little bit on the G14. Going into the town, let's center up into the middle of the town and we're running again. Don't arrest me, please. All right. Averages came up higher for the G14 again so far. 56, 26 
Interesting. This is going to be a very CPU-bound area right here with all these little NPCs running around, all the homeless people and stuff. Uh, so there it is. I think I pressed the wrong button. Crap. I reset the average instead of... I have to look at the replay to see our average numbers. But sitting here right now, 54.19, 43.30. But this is... I got to... I'll just reset this both so they're both active. So both both have been refreshed right now. We'll let them run for a minute. I'm going to look up on the live stream what we got right before it ended up being reset. So 54 versus 47. So 7 FPS more for the G14. 1% low, though, was a little bit better with the Intel. 17 versus 19. Intel winning the 1% low battle, but only by 2 FPS. So not very significant. Um, overall, definitely better performance on the G14, even in Dragon's Dogma 2. And right now in this scenario, it's the most extreme difference we've seen. 55 versus 43. Huge difference in performance overall for the G14 winning out. Okay, next up, Dying Light 2. All right, very nice. Okay, so Dying Light 2 came out, the game that came out, uh, I think, at the beginning of the last year. A zombie survival kind of open world-ish game with some really good storytelling, and uh, I really liked the game in my initial playthrough. I only played a couple hours of it, though. Um, okay, so I have already set the settings in this game, but let's see... I want to make sure that the settings are still the same. So high quality ray tracing preset, no V-Sync, max resolution 2880 by 1800. DLSS is on quality and frame generation is enabled. That is correct. For video settings, high quality ray tracing, max resolution. DLSS on quality and frame generation is enabled. Perfect. Okay, so. Um, so you can kind of see that we're running the same things there. Cool. Let's go ahead and activate both games at the same time. Here we go. Dying Light 2. Dun, dun, dun. Who's going to win? This is generally a more GPU-bound game, not as CPU-dependent from my understanding we're going to reset our fps averages boom whoa 66 on the g14 versus 55 a quick at a glance the g14 should dominate this one because it's a very gpu bound game boost clock on the gpu is higher wattage is higher on the gpu fps is obviously much higher one percent lows aren't really relevant here VRAM usage on the G14 is still higher for some reason. Interesting. Um, CPU wattage, again, very nice CPU wattage on the G14. 11 versus 29. Makes you wonder if the Omen 14 had a Ryzen chip instead of Intel, could it compete better with the G14? I would say almost for sure, yes. Almost for sure, yes. The only 14 would have higher FPS for our frame rate averages. Um, so question, how do I change my keyboard color? I have the Duo Pro Zen. Usually it's in your control software. Dig around in there for lighting settings. There also might be a button on your keyboard that you can switch between some presets. Overall average so far, 67 for the G14, 54 for the uh, Omen 14. But we'll see what our averages are inside of uh, the Dying Light 2 official numbers. 
which in theory I think could be more accurate. I don't know if it's calculating frame gen numbers better now. I think it is. But let's see. Average or median FPS 68, median 54, so 14 FPS more on the G14 versus the Omen 14. That is that is very significant for the exact same C, the exact same GPU, same price point. A 14 FPS gain when it's only 54, that's that's like over 20% gain in performance, right? That's huge. That is very huge. Um, okay, so we need to go here and mark that uh, G14 wins Dragon Dogma. G14 wins Dying Light 2. Let's go to God of War next. So God of War, another epic action RPG, AAA title from Sony, um, at least from the PlayStation series, you know, basically they transported it over to PC, Sony Interactive Entertainment, and uh, yeah, this game, very GPU bound typically, so I'm anticipating G14 performance should be very good. So just ensuring DLSS on quality, max resolution, graphics set to ultra. Correct, correct. Let's go ahead and load in. Display, max resolution, DLSS set to quality, graphics set to ultra. Good. Let's go ahead and load in on the G14. All right. So... The exact same scenario here at the beginning. Opening shot. 55 FPS versus 51. It's a 4 FPS gain so far. Not super significant. 1% low. Looking a little better on the Ryzen at 50 versus 42. Ah, not too significant so far. Let's go ahead and back the camera up. And get to our starting for our benchmark area and we're going to aim the camera a little to the right a little to the right things are looking great we'll start our benchmark run right now all right so new numbers overall so far Things are looking much better on the G14, 58 versus 53. Bingo. 59, 53, that's a 6 FPS gain. Um, and the 1% low, even bigger difference, 49, 39, 10 FPS gain. Again, more wattage, more GPU boost clock, what we've seen in the other GPU bound games so far. Um, a little over a 10% gain, like a 12% gain. Advantage for the Zephyrus G14. Let's mark the win down for God of War. G14 wins. Hogwarts Legacy is next. A very CPU-oriented game where the Omen may stand a chance to take another win. Let's find out. What is the cheapest laptop? RTX 4080. Uh, Casper, you want to know that? Check out my laptop list linked in the description down below. Well, this is loading in. I can briefly show you this. So if you want to find that information out, you click the link in the description to the laptop list. This will have links to where you can find the cheapest 4080. The best way to do that would probably be to um, search... The model, go to the model here, type 4080, press enter, and now you've got the cheapest 4080s will be at the top because it's already sorted by price in each category. So the Aura 17H with a 4080 is $1699 right now. 
It's a full HD 360 hertz display. The next cheapest is going to be the Alienware M16 with a 4080 at $1799. My recommended 4080 laptop would probably be the Legion Pro 7i. The Helio 16 4080, I'd probably go for that one. If it was my money right now, I'd probably go for this Helio 16 4080 for 1849 QHD 240 hertz with an i9 1300HX. That's absolutely tremendous value for a 4080. Um, the Legion Pro 7i, better keyboard, better build quality though. I'd maybe swing up to that one for the additional gains there. Okay, so moving back into our continuing our testing hogwarts let's go and check our settings out dlss on quality frame generation enabled on both let's go to our settings we should be on ultra 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 with ray tracing enabled that's correct ultra ultra with ray tracing enabled that's correct okay cool so we'll go ahead and back out of our settings we'll load into our character we will do a quick load test and see which one loads quicker in Hogwarts. Okay, so. Interesting, it looks like the G14 may have crashed. The G14 did crash, interesting. Not sure why. But we did have a crash, so let's reload Hogwarts. It happens sometimes. If you wanted something, uh, Casper, if you want something super mobile, you could get the G14 with the 4080 for $21.99 right here. Currently on sale, $300 off. Uh, this would be absolutely fantastic performance in a 14-inch chassis if you're looking for um, more on the go. Like you want to travel with it all the time, take it to classes all the time, take it around your office or whatever. That's the way I would go um, for an ultra portable 14 inch. And it's good value too, because it's a nicer display than some of the other laptops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We just crashed again. What's happening with Hogwarts? What the heck? I don't know. I don't know why it's crashing. Something's going on, causing it to crash. I can't take time to troubleshoot it right now. Let's move on to Starfield. It would have been interesting to see Hogwarts because maybe it would have won. Hard to say. All right, so Starfield, another game. I set the settings before, beforehand, but we'll double check the settings. So under display, we have all the max resolution with DLSS on quality frame generation should be enabled. So I'm glad I checked the settings. Let's go back. Did not save that. It's not saving frame generation being enabled for some reason. That is really weird. Neither is this one. Weird.
I don't know. That is very weird. Okay. Now it saved it. Turning off. Turning off reflex with boost is enabling me to keep frame gen on for some reason. Very weird. All right, let's see the load tests. Which one loads quicker? We're loading into a saved game on Akilla. Akilla in Starfield is one of the most complex cities inside of the game. More CPU demanding, CPU oriented. I think we might be GPU bound, but I think we'll be CPU. We're close, very CPU demanding. Look at our CPU wattage on the Ryzen coming up higher at least, not just 10 or nine watts. Well, we were at 25, 30, now it's 13. So that's actually pretty good. Maybe we're not a CPU bound, or maybe we'll get more CPU bound as we get into the city. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start our run. So far, the G14 significantly in the lead, 65 versus 75. We'll continue our walk forward here. 72 versus 62. S very close 1% lows, but our average FPS being significantly higher on the G14 so far. Um, I just realized I didn't have the, quite, the right setting there set. Okay, so boom, boom. 70 for our FPS average on the G14, 61 for the Omen 14. Very close 1% lows. G14 obviously wins though, because higher FPS is better. Yay. We still have the Witcher 3 down there at the bottom to do. Starfield, G14 wins. And we're just going to delete Hogwarts Legacy, sadly. Couldn't do that one. But we got Witcher 3 le uh, next. And then we'll do a summary overview of everything we found out so far. Asus fail on the Hogwarts. Kind of. In a way, it kind of did. But I don't think it's Asus's fault. It's probably something buggy going on and, and it obviously worked fine when i was setting up the game i don't know why it didn't work this time honestly probably just a restart of the asus laptop might get it working but i just don't want to spend too much time troubleshooting it so we'll verify our graphics settings are all the same ray tracing on max quality ray tracing ultra settings dlss on quality that's correct for our display we're on max resolution 2880 by 1800 frame generation is enabled on both laptops we will hit load game Load game. There we go. Rigged by wizards. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Asus technically, uh, it, mm, mm, technically the Omen kind of wins the Hogwarts, but not really. I don't. Know. I don't I don't think it's worth jotting it down. Okay, let's see what our averages are like. Looking pretty close. Initially it was, it was like 57 versus 58, but now the G14 kicking in a little, little bit higher on the FPS. Optimizing the CPU usage here much better at 10 watts versus 29 over here on Intel. Uh, Asus and AMD just doing a better job uh, maximizing its the CPU utilization, you know, like the wattage, the wattage utilization just a little bit better on the GPU 
and CPU combination is just optimized better. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's I think it's largely because it's Ryzen. It's a little bit more power efficient uh, architecture, but I think it's also a matter of like, how does the firmware and the BIOS prioritize CPU, GPU power allocation? And could the Intel CPU right here actually go down to like at least under 20? And then we could go to 75 up here for the GPU and the same total wattage going through the system. You might be able to have significant power boost gains overall if the GPU could boost higher right here. And even with this, even with the same exact hardware we have on the inside, like the Omen 14, if you could go into like in the Asus Armory crate, you can set the CPU power limit and slide it all the way down to 15 if you wanted. So it never goes above 15. Um, and then you get more FPS in games. At least not CPU bound games, not C, you know, if it's GPU bound game, like here, we're 99 GPU percent utilization, you know, in that gaming scenario, only having 10 Watts going through the CPU really helps the G14 maximize its power. Okay. So standing here in the exact same spot, 65 versus 57, that's an eight FPS gain. That's like a 14 FPS higher average, though 1% lows are actually better on the Intel. Pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and run backwards through the uh, encampment here. I don't know, I gotta get lined up here for our initial run. Let me just go ahead and do that. Can be a little tricky with Witcher character because it like doesn't turn on a dime. The character kind of rounds itself around stuff. Uh, it's kind of silly. Okay. All right. Let's set a new average. All right, so new area of the game. Very similar things on the display right now. Like it looks basically exactly the same for as far as framing goes. 55 FPS for the G14, 49 for the Omen 14. 1% low, very similar. Let's go ahead and do a sprint run through this. Ah, we're trying our best here. It's difficult when I'm controlling two Witcher characters and they don't want to go to the exact same. All right, we're going to reset from here. And we'll try again. Ah, we're through the gates. we got to run down the bridge, though. I don't think we're going to make this jump. Okay, we made the jump on the G14. Got to make the jump. On the omen. Well, bam. That's good. Uh, let's go ahead and continue our test here. Shabam. Uh, one dive, the other one didn't. It's fine. Trying to look the same way here. It's hard. Let's do it exactly the same, but it's pretty close. We're aiming roughly in the same direction. Shaboom. Okay, so. There we go. There's our test. 63, 56, 1% 1 low, 45, 56. Almost identical 1% lows, but much better average FPS for the G14. And in this game, any kind of in this kind of FPS range, G-Sync can also make a big difference um, in terms of screen tearing and clarity of the image. Interesting. Overall, it's kind of hard to tell the screen tearing difference, honestly. Even when I move the mouse fast, it's kind of hard to tell.
I'll try setting it to this and I'll go fast left and right. Can you tell chat? Can you tell? Screen tearing difference? I can't tell the difference. I don't know. It's, kind of, it, it's very difficult to tell. Okay. ABC with the $50 super chat. Thank you so much. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, says, my mom gifted me this for B-Day and a 4K OLED monitor by Alienware. New to gaming. Is this worth it? Will it perform? Okay, should I get a PS5? Asus ROG G14, 165 hertz, QHD, Ryzen 9, 7940HS, 32 gigs of RAM, RTX 4090. Dude, you got a freaking rocking laptop. I mean, if I were to get a 14-inch laptop, that's like, sounds like you're on the younger side. Uh, in terms of like you want something portable, you can take to class, you can, it'll age well. You could probably use this laptop for a long time. Uh, the 4090 version also has the mini LED display. So you're like, you're rocking the brightest 14 inch laptop display with the most color gamut, um, great contrast, not the highest refresh rate, but the highest power laptop with the 4090 for gaming performance. So congrats on your laptop, dude, and thanks so much for the super chat. Really appreciate that. What's up, Evo? Um, Fi says, how good of a deal do you think Zephyrus G16 4090 is? About the limited wattage, I can flash the VBIOS and get it to 175 watt. Um, the G14 4060, I think, is a decent deal when you compare it with the more expensive, like, Razer Blade 16, but not as good a value as something like the Legion Pro 7i. But the the Zephyrus G16 is much thinner, much more portable. So if your focus is portability, the Zephyrus G16 with the 4090 is, I think, a very good balance of portability and performance. It's just because it has slightly lower performance because of the lower power limit. Uh, you're going to have to be willing to tweak the settings on certain high, ultra high demanding games, the most demanding games, if you want to get above, say, 60 to 90 FPS, depending on the game. Um, at a minimum for like AAA titles. Okay, so let's get into our summary of the overall performance of this laptop. Let's just back this out a little bit more. And let's move this. Marking the last. Uh oh. I think I crashed. No. OBS crash. Is the stream still going? I need to check if the stream is still going. Hi. Stream, is it still working? It looks like the stream is still working, so... Interesting. Okay, the stream is still working. We're going to just power through then. Um, OBS on my side is not responsive. OBS on my screen is crashed, but it's still working in the background, so we're going to power through um, and just get this out the gate here. Okay, so summarizing the differences between this laptop... Between these two laptops, let's move into that. I'm just going to disable the max fans on both of these. So that way it's quieter for the end here. Okay, and I'm going to pick these up and hold them. It's so weird that the OBS crashed, but the stream is still working. Okay. Shabam. Is that good? <laughs> uh, let me pull up. Let me make the stream a little larger. Okay, so I can read everything, all the side text. Okay, for value comparison, um, I mean, if the Omen 14 is on a large sale and the G14 is not on a large sale, like if the Omen 14 is $400 less, I think the value is about the same. Um, Cause you're getting 
about 15% more performance with the G14, just on average in almost all the different games. It's a pretty significant difference in performance. And for that reason alone, I recommend the G14. Now, there are other significant differences between these two devices. The Omen 14 was heavier at 3.62 pounds versus 3.26 pounds. Pretty big difference there. Uh, as far as I can tell, the display on these two laptops are identical, but the G14 has G-Sync. That is a pretty significant advantage. Build quality also feels better on the G14 with a more rigid overall build, especially around the spacebar and touchpad area. The corners of the Omen feel pretty good on the wrist rest, but the closer you get to the center, it just gets more bouncy feeling. And that's not great. Um, hinge feels about the same between the two of them, um, but, but yeah. Um, I didn't really show the hinge, but I can't really show it right now. Uh, they're both reasonably stable, especially like right now, and you're moving them around like this. They're, they're very stable, but on a desk, they're also pretty stable. But I wish they were both a little bit more rigid in terms of like rigidity of like the, the bounce of the hinge. It's, it's noticeably could be stiffer. I guess is the way I would say. And that might be, if you tuned it to be stiffer, the tricky part is you might not be able to open it with one hand, like one finger opening, which both can do. Overall, I like the build quality on both. Design wise, I like the G14 design a little bit better. Both of these have glass, glossy touch, not, not touch enabled uh, displays. And they both have like a rubber rim around the edge of the display, which I really like. But the overall aesthetics, of the G14 is just better in my opinion. Whereas at least with the four zone R R RGB keyboard, if it was per key RGB on the Omen 14, maybe it would be a bit closer in terms of looks, but the classiness of the G14 is just, it's just got better design aesthetics that look like a more expensive, more high value laptop. Um, software, I think the G14 has more features, you can set power limits for the G14, uh, more power limits. You can set some dynamic boost options and stuff like that for the Omen 14, but there's just more customization for fan speed, more customization for uh, your speaker profile, more customization for um, overclocking or underclocking, depending on how you want to optimize the laptop for noise output. Um, more customization for NVIDIA GPU only mode versus integrated only mode, um, and of course, G-Sync capable on the G14 where the Omen 14 does not have G-Sync. Uh, speaker test, G14 noticeably louder, more full sound for the speakers. They smack you in the face. They're some of the best laptop speakers that I've ever heard overall, like legitimately. And I've tested like tons and tons of laptops. It's up there with some of the best, like top five gaming laptops of all time for speaker testing. Um, very close to an Apple laptop in terms of speaker quality, though I still think the MacBook Pro is still a little bit better. Uh, max fan noise, the G14 is louder, which means the Omen 14 actually wins from a max fan perspective, but in terms of actual cooling, the G14 can cool more watts down, but they're pretty close. The, the Omen 14, because it has a lower TDP GPU, actually had lower GPU temps pretty often, but the CPU temps on the G14 spikes up to 100 fairly often as well, like when you're loading into games and loading applications. Yeah. Cinebench R23, Omen 14, slightly faster, like less than 5% better. Cinebench R24, Omen 14, still slightly faster, though single core performance, noticeably better, about 20 to 25% better on the Omen 14. Time Spy GPU absolutely crushed um, with the G14 over 12,000 versus 10,400, about 1570 uh, points higher on the G14, which is very significant around the 13 to 14% mark. And that is about what we saw for averages for most of the games with the G14 winning in all of them except Cyberpunk 2077 where the Omen 14 won because it was very CPU bound. Um, yeah, very interesting. Very high CPU demand in Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing enabled and all those NPCs running around. So uh, that was the only game where we saw the Omen 14 actually outperform the G14. Uh, okay, Crystal Dismark, 
We had some better readings for the Omen 14, some better readings for the G14. Uh, overall, I called it a tie. The 8064 RAM speed G14 wins because of faster latency and faster L1, L2, L3 cache speeds. Baldur's Gate 3 G14 wins. Cyberpunk 2077, again, Omen 14 won that. Dead Space G14, Dragon's Dogma G14, Dying Light 2 G14, God of War G14, Starfield G14, Witcher 3 G14 won as well. So nine out of 10 games, better performance. And CPU performance, very close, almost a tie. G That's the only thing that the Omen 14 kind of had a good clear win with. Um, other than that, from speakers, design, software, uh, flex test, weight, power limits, gaming performance, G14 is just better. And these laptops are the same price, so only go for the Omen 14 if it's on a considerable discount compared to the G14 in the ballpark of like $400 or so difference in price would make me swing over to the Omen 14 camp. $300 discount on the Omen 14, I'd say they're about even in terms of value. Um, and if it's less than $200 difference or the same price, I would go Zephyrus G14 for sure. It's definitely the better laptop between the two. And that's my review of the benchmark battle review comparison between the Omen 14 and the Zephyrus G14. I hope you guys found it helpful and enjoyable. Please drop a like on the live stream. Consider subscribing for more content. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Brandon out. Huzzah. Cha, cha, cha. Pa, pa, pa. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to end the live stream because... OBS is not responding. Do I just end task? I don't know. <laughs> Can I switch camera? I can't even switch camera, so I can't show you what's going on, but that's it for the live stream. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm gonna end, I guess, we're gonna go to the task manager to end this live stream today. Never done that before. I hope the files are fine, because uh, I'm recording this. LOL. <laughs>